Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Uh, today I'm revisiting my AVE 64 here. Uh, in, in a previous video I did replace the uh, memory chip here to upgrade it from half a megabyte to two megabyte of uh, sound font memory. So what I would like to do was uh, recapping the card. I haven't done a sound card other than on motherboards. So figured I wanted to basically try to upgrade this, this card and refresh the caps. So I wasn't sure that was going to be a video because I figured how, how interesting it is to see someone just uh, put new caps on a sound card and basically show off the new caps. Uh, but uh, even if I were to do this just for myself, which was the original plan, I do want to know what all the caps are doing. So we have caps like pretty much everywhere here, uh, some bottom here. And some are more obvious than others, what they do. And there are basically two functions the caps serve on a sound card that I can see. So bottom here we have three caps. They are for 5 volt filtering from the rails. And I've got some big caps here, which I figured was for the built-in amplifier. It makes sense. So those are connected in series with the, with the output. So basically, they block DC, but they let through AC. And so sound is basically AC. Uh, you can send a signal in, uh, the sound, and it would technically come out at the end. Uh, that's the simple uh, explanation. So while uh, the caps on the rails are between ground and the rail, in parallel with the ground and rail, uh, they help to uh, filter out any ripple and so on from the rails. So I want to tell caps apart, and the ones that are for uh, DC filtering here on the rails, and what's for the sound that is basically in series, series with the line in and line out, uh, like the speaker and the mic. To do this, well, you can obviously just take qualified guesses on what caps are what, and you can, to some extent, I didn't know then, but I guess that you could look at the caps, the values and the make, and figure out that maybe the, the identical ones are for one specific purpose only. But uh, yeah, I decided to basically measure where all these go to. All the caps on the card more or less, uh, some were a little bit iffy, but uh, we we'll get to that later. So that's what I wanted to do, and I figured when I actually had done this, it took me a couple of days, uh, I figured I actually had enough to make an interesting video. So maybe someone else wants to recap either this type of sound card, it's a CT4520, so an A64, and there are different versions, but yeah. So either you want to do this card, or uh, you want to do a different card. So I'm gonna point out I'm not an expert on electronics, uh, nor am I an expert on sound or sound cards. So this is basically by an amateur, for amateurs I guess. So yeah, let's have a look uh, what's on this card and what things do as far as I can tell, the very basics. So like I said, I've basically just looking at the card figure, this must be the amp here. So we can bring up the data sheet for that here. So I got that on the screen. This is the data sheet for the amplifier and it's a TDA1517. So two by six watt stereo amplifier. So we can scroll down here, we get some uh, values, means and max and typical values for its operating range and uh, the internal turners of it. We're not that interested in that though. Here we have the pinout, which is obviously interesting if we're gonna try to figure out what things do. And if we quickly look at uh, the ships here, there are two variants, but they're essentially the same. So we got the right one. But if you look at the left one and the right one, the, the pins on the right, number 10 to 18, does nothing. So we can basically look at this one if we want to. So we got the, the with the P version here. So we can see here we've got negative, just negative in INV1 here. You can shake up here, non-inverting input 1, so I guess that's an audio channel. And at the bottom pin 9 we got the second one, since we have stereo, we have two channels. 
Uh, we have signal signal ground on pin number two. We've got supply voltage ripple reaction output on pin three, and I'm not an expert on that, but it seems to be so the ship knows what kind of ripple there is on the supply voltage and can I guess compensates for that. So it doesn't find its way out, out to the speakers, but I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, I did a quick Google search on that. So it's not that interesting to me right now. And we got output on number four and six. Uh, so, that, so those would be the output we're gonna send to say a pair of speakers, but we don't do that directly. We're gonna look at that later. Then we got P, G and D, the power ground. So basically the ground plane where we get our neutral to speak. Uh, then got the pin number seven is supply voltage. I think that's 12 volts. Uh, it's 12 volts on the card. Could be something else. There's an operating range for that. But considering this ship seems to be intended for like stereo amplifiers and say cars, you got 12 volts in your car too. That makes sense. And I've got this M dash SS oh, a slash uh, mute standby switch input. Not that interested in that. So that basically all the pins. So the ones we really want to track is like the input and the output, and to some extent um, where the uh, supply voltage ripple goes and the uh, supply voltage go. Uh, since we want to, we have caps related to that for the supply voltage, and we also have caps related to the inputs and outputs. So we can scroll down here again and get more information. Not relevant for me right now. Let's see here. So here is a example circuit here. Just zoom in on that. Because this is, well, to a layman, I think this is much easier to digest. So VP, as I said, was supply voltage. That should be 12 volts. Standby switch, not interested in that because I'm not sure how Creative implemented that if at all. Maybe they didn't. So we can see here we've got the 100 nanofarad cap and a 2200 microfarads. Uh, that doesn't exist on the card. Caps do exist, but uh, not that those values. It's an example circuit, obviously, and this should be ground. So we know, know those are connected between a rail and a ground. So that's uh, the one type of cap I'm looking at. So me personally, I'm looking at uh, some low ESR caps for that. Uh, here we have the input caps, for example, uh, 220 nanofarads. So those are probably going to be ceramic. It seems like that's what it is on the card. So we're not going to bother changing, changing those. Uh, what we're interested in electrolytics. So here we have the outputs 4 and 6 for the speakers. And they have a thousand microfarads in series here. And then the speaker and then ground. And like I said, the um, sound is basically AC. So it's going to be different amplitude. And the caps will let that through, but not DC. So on the card here, these are at 16 volts, 470 microfarads. Uh, I don't know why that's specifically that value on this card, but uh, the, 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 the capacity determines the frequency range from what I understand. So you can calculate that if you know the impedance of your speaker. So on a PC that would be, since this is amplified, it would be a headset mode likely, or some passive speakers that doesn't have their own built-in power supply and amplifier. Say so like uh, active would be USB speakers, for example, that uses power from USB port, or uh, have a brick for your wall outlet. So uh, passive one would, would be headphones or some kind of speakers that are intended to be used with an amplifier in the from the source. So you shouldn't really connect your modern speakers to this. But the, this amplifier gives us a good idea of what kind of caps we're looking at because you probably want one type of cap for the rails and different type of cap maybe for the uh, for the actual uh, signal lines for your line in line out uh, the mic your uh, speaker. So you might want some audio grade caps here. I'm saying audio grade within like quotes because anything can be audio grade. It's uh, more seems to be more like a marketing term. So uh, you can technically have audio audio grade caps for this particular 
Ja, och ju Kedimen här var det Grade, Cast, Polymers för att switcha Power Supply, Modern, High Fee, Mounted, Rack, Amplifier. Så ja, det är Grade by itself att inte säga tell you that much. But uh, yeah, you might be shopping for something suitable for this particular task. Uh, for the outputs here, something that is suitable for audio. And you want to put those there, you don't want to put them over here, for example. And vice versa, whatever you want to use. For your rails, you might not want to use here. Uh, you might want to put polymers on your rail or something like that. That might not be suitable here. I'm not an expert, like I said. And you, yeah, depending on the application. I'm not gonna put polymers or anything like that on this card because uh, I don't know how some of the onboard voltage regulators will uh, react to that. But uh, we could obviously change those too. But yeah, uh, that's basically what we're looking at. So you can actually go look at the card here. So I have made a list of what's on the card. So we got some uh, those two green ones here were the, the big ones for the speaker output that is amplified by the ship like we talked about. So we have 16 volt caps here for 70 microfarads, then diameter of 8 and radio amount of 3.5. And, and I wrote audio here just so we know what they're doing. So we can see some other ones here, it says rail or misc, and we get to the misc part and later. Uh, that's basically, I couldn't fully identify what they do, but uh, they should not be directly related to audio. So yeah, we can see the card here. So I did uh, trace out everything as best as I could, which turned into a spaghetti mess. I should probably have done multiple layers. So can hide the caps. So you can see our yaks here. And I've written some symbols on them too. And we're gonna get to that. We should probably do that first. So here I have like a schematic of uh, an audio jack. So this is the bottom here. So that would be your ground. Like here is here's your jack. So we put in your 2.5 millimeter plug. So ground, and then we got, uh, I don't know if the left or right channel, but we got two pins for either. So we got two pins here, could be left, and these could be right. I'm not sure about the uh, exact what's left and right, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, you can ask yourself then, why do we have four pins, uh, two per channel? And that's uh, essentially if we look at this uh, diagram here. We got this ring here, that's your ground, number one. Now you can see two and three are connected here. We've got an arrow here. So two and three are connected. Four and five are connected. But they're only connected when there's nothing plugged in. If you plug something in, you can imagine this lifting up and uh, this lifting down, separating away from this the arrow here, which breaks the connection between two and three and four and five. And this is quite important because you can buy these without this functionality. Or you can buy them with just the one on one of them. Uh, and the usefulness of this is, for example, if you have a header, so you can look at the card here. I'll go back to here. So you can see here, we got uh, this is our speaker out. A lot of these go to this ship, and this is our line out. So I've also got some wires going up to this here. This is a connector here, so we can actually. Do like that, you can see it more clearly. Also got a connector up here. So these two are like internal headers. You obviously got your like CD in up here and your AUX. Uh, and got a TAD connector, I don't know what that does. Uh, can bring up the traces again. But as you can see here, uh, some, some traces, so I mean here, this yellow one goes to this header, but this green one goes over to this cap here. And that basically allows you to uh, use this header for audio internally when you have nothing connected externally. And when you connect something, this is disconnected. So I would assume so you wouldn't get like crosstalk you know, two sources on the same line. For example, if we scroll up here, we've got our line in here. So we've got our left and right channels on the output here, which is left and right, I don't know, it doesn't matter. And we can also see that they have connected these two together. You can measure it or you can just disorder this connector and you would find a, a trace underneath there. So basically when there's nothing connected in the yak here, so if you just uh, have a simulator here, which is good. If I connect something in here, 
Now, turn the card over. Outer pins would be the ones sending signals. So we got traces here and here. And uh, the inner ones would be actually be disconnected. And uh, vice versa. So if I pull this out, now technically, the outer ones are still connected, but there's nothing in the jack. So there's nothing to really interfere. So now, uh, this connector over here, and the very pin from the, the second pin from the bottom left here, is uh, now connected to the line in in mono. So you actually get mono if you use the internal header for whatever it is for. I don't have any accessories for this card, so I actually don't know what uh, how that accessory looks like. I could ex imagine maybe this is used for some five and a quarter front bay or something like that. So for demonstration purposes, we can measure the line in here and we can see not, nothing is connected now in the line in, it's the blue one. So and we got the empty hole in the middle, so that's like the center, we got ground over here, so we can actually test it, it's ground. So those two pins at the bottom here is the same channel, we can measure them, pretty good noise there, and the same for these. So that, that's basically shorter, those two pairs. Put something in here now. I can measure these again. And I get nothing. I get out of line now. And same for this. So if you ever want to replace a yak on the card, on the sound card, you can actually figure out what type it is by doing this. And order the right one. So these are not connected now. Shouldn't be. Okay, those are apparently always connected. And this is just the uh, microphone, so there's no stereo there anyway. And those are not connected. Not connected. So connecting one of these, uh, like an empty three and a half plug, I'm using one of these. You can use pretty much anything with nothing in the end. That way you could actually trace out the individual traces. So you can trace this one here separately from this one. Because if you have nothing in here, you could, uh, like this trace over here, it's obviously connected. So I could measure on this one and then trace and everything. And then when I actually plug something in, it's not connected to what I expect it to be. So this is quite useful to have this connected when you're tracing the, where the individual pins actually go on the board. So that's how I trace that out, basically. So I wanted to do double check one thing because I missed this when I measured myself. As uh, you might, um, like we noticed when I put something in here, there was still connection on that side. So I went to Bogans because there's that thread where they built their, the Legacy Age 64. So on the screen here I have a picture of where they have stripped off the ports. So we, I'm upside side down here, but if you look at the picture here, it says Mike in here. So it's upside down. Uh, this here. Access is the right channel, and we can see a bridge there. So those two are connected. So that's why we always have a connection there. So I wanted to make sure that they all use the same kind of uh, uh, same kind of jack. So this one type of jack, it seems for everything. And while that picture is up, and we can also look at here, like what I said about the left and right being uh, connected when you're using the header. Uh, let's see, which header was it? Uh, line that big header there. So yeah, so that one goes to essentially this trace here. Uh, 
So when you're using the, actually using the rear jack, you got uh, stereo because then this uh, bridge is also disconnected. So I think that's it for the uh, jacks. So we know this is a line in the blue one and this is a mic in. So if we just follow one of these traces here, uh, green one here, it goes, it doesn't go, it doesn't connect to this one here, it just crosses over here. Goes into this uh, operation amplifier, so an image of it up here. The, this one is that type is over here and here. It's a different model over here, but it has the same pin out. Uh, so I don't know if they're function identical or not uh, in terms of specifications, but uh, it's a different model. But uh, they use the same pin out. So this would be pin one here and uh, pin one here. And for this one, this would be pin one. So we can look at the image here. The green comes here and it essentially goes in on pin six here. And so that's one of the inputs. Uh, you have two inputs, one inverted and non-inverted. I'm not an expert on uh, op amps, uh, so I'm not gonna bother with it. But uh, what's very interesting in where it comes in and where it goes out. So it goes out here, goes to this cap over here. So this is series again, so it comes out here. So you can't just measure from say there to well, wherever on the ship it goes. There are traces on the back, so it's quite easy to see where they go on the back. So we know that this cap has to do with the channel over on the line in here. So we can trace the red one over here. So that would be pin, uh, uh, let's see here, would be pin number two. It essentially comes out at uh, pin number one. It doesn't go to the next one here, it goes down to here, so it actually skips two of them. So that's worth having in mind later. I'm gonna go into why that matters. And then it goes over to the ship here. So it's basically the same for everything. Uh, we've got our mic, since that's mono. We've got an in, we've got, it can go over to here to this header, or it goes over to this cap here, up to this op amp, over to this cap. So, so actually two caps. And then over here. And uh, yeah, let's keep looking. We can look at like this, uh, this AX connector. It has uh, one channel over here, it goes into here. And the thing is, there's a lot of resistors here. So if you measure from say here to here, I think it's like 20,000 ohms here, 20 kilo ohms. And most of them, there's about 20 kilo ohms. So you need to set your multimeter to say 200,000 kilo ohms. Uh, so because uh, this one should be at 20k, uh, resistor, I think some of them differ. Some, I think the mic with 10, maybe. I think some places were like 40, I think with like 220 k. But you just have to let the mind, you can just set into like diode mode and expect a beep. Uh, and I, in some places, we have caps in series ceramic ones too. So, yeah, so that goes over there. We've got the other channel going in here. So, those two caps on top here is for the AUX jack here. Uh, you can look at the speaker output that is amplified. It actually crossed uh, like a, so the bottom one is for the pin up here and then the bottom one there is, a, is for the uh, cap up here. And I go in here, like I said, in the outputs that are closest to the middle. Ground is in the middle here. And um, let's see here, where's our inputs? And we've got an input here. And I drew two lines here, there's a capacitor here. So, and the F, if you remember the diagram, there was like 200, 220 nanofiber capacitors. I would guess that's one of them. That's that one of them. And then this goes to this cap here, but it doesn't use the cap, it just goes there into this op, op amp. So this is output. It also goes to one of the inputs. Don't ask me how that works, uh, but it uses a resistor. So so, yeah. So, but we're not really interested in that. We, we conclude it goes to the output. We have an input here, which comes from this side here. There are also a bunch of resistors. So this whole op amp is used for two channels. And since it has four outputs, so that this, is, this side is chained to this side. Uh, yeah, so essentially, if we trace this from the 
from say here, from the in, uh, from the input here, and from the input here, which becomes our output for our speakers. These two, you can trace this. It goes through this cap. This one goes through this cap here. They come here. Then they basically come out here, down to this cap. And essentially, if we look at the green one here, it does the same thing. It goes to this header, goes through this cap. This one down here comes to this cap up here. So they unify here, go in here, move over to this yellow trace, over to this cap. So these two down here is for uh, essentially for uh, line and speaker. Uh, and yeah, so we can actually take uh, get that if you do like this. So we got line out to speaker out, these two. We got line in. Then we got tab push PC speaker, these two. And uh, then we got line in again. And then we got uh, AUX and CD, two caps here. I drawn black lines here to show what uh, what what. Uh, what caps are relevant to that. So the, this big back black line here shows that this cap with the green lines and this cap with the red lines is uh, is for uh, the, the line in. So that's basically the audio caps. So if you want to buy audio grade caps within quotes, that's where you would put them. Uh, traces. So essentially, the green ones, those two, and those uh, red ones, 13 of them, is what, where you want your audio grade cap, so to speak. So if we bring up uh, traces again, you can see here, here is the ripple reduction output, so this one. That's pin number three. So that's what that is, it's a 100 microfarad, it's the same as this one. And I assume that would be the same if you're trying to, well, if they're trying to figure out the distortion on the input, whatever ripple is and so on. And you got a diode here, worth noting when you're measuring. So you got your supply voltage here. So it goes in there and you have a cap here. And it goes down to plus 12 volt on the connector, which is on the back side. That's why I have painted the pin that's on the back side. You can like Google uh, ISA pinout and you should get a pinout. So yeah, 12 volt comes in here and you got the ground here and that's the gray lines. And uh, this symbol here, uh, basically three lines, the last one being basically a dot. That's always grounded. So we know these are for basically for rails. So this is a 12 volt rail and this is for supply ripple. Thingy. The supply voltage ripple reaction output. So we can uh, see here they have more of these. So here is an interesting area here. We've got two linear voltage regulators here. So one of them is a, uh, let's see here. This one up here is the beginning, so to speak. So we've got 12 volts coming in here. It's supposed to be a V there, but in a way. So this is five volts coming out. So this is a linear one, and you can actually probably see the model name here, KA78. Uh, I think it's MO5R, but the five is basically five volt. So this is a linear voltage regulator. So it has a fixed output voltage, and it's so we can see here that the, we have 12 volt caps for the incoming here. So filter at goes to ground, and we got the output here, 5 volts goes to two caps, and so they have ground on the negative side. And then that goes to another voltage regulator here that takes 5 volts and turns it into 3.3 volt. I have to remember that a, the ISA bus doesn't have 3.3 volt to begin with. And uh, so that's sent off to a bunch of caps. I've got one here, I've got two here. Uh, one over here. I think that's it. The 5 volt that this creates is also sent over to this ship here, this ship here, and this one. So you can see the traces here. 
it might go to this one too. I haven't checked what this thing does because it's never showed up as being relevant for this. Uh, so yeah, so this is how we get uh, extra 5 volts up to here. I don't know why it has separate 5 volts on this one, but uh, probably a good reason. And uh, yeah, and this is how we get 2.3 volts. Now we actually need, well, we need, but the card has negative 5. You can see it here, negative 5. So we have negative 12, but uh, not all power supplies can give negative 5. So unlike the very early sound loss that it needs negative 5, this one has this volt voltage regulator here. So it, uh, there are like 3 pin, in like your transistor 3, three pin versions, but this is like a surface mount one. So it has three inputs that are connected. That's why I paint it like that. And they are ground somewhere probably. Uh, anyways. Uh, I have output here. So this is our negative 5 volt capacitor here, connected to ground. So this is a rail effectively. All these are rails, so 12 volt rail, 5 volt rail, 2.3 volt rail, uh, negative 5 volt rail. And those also go up to these uh, op, op amps here. So to the negative. So this would be, they would go to pin number 11. So negative 5 there, and we'd have positive 5 on uh, pin number 4. So now we know what these do, and this is just uh, negative uh, 12. That's why the negative side is, the, on the cap is on the negative there. The positive is on the ground, because you have to, the voltage potential is reverse basically. So you can consider the negative 12, uh, negative 12, you can argue that this is, if that's zero, then this is plus 12. So, so you don't turn that around by mistake. So I think that's all the caps except uh, for five of them here. These two are connected, I think with pretty high resistance, like 20 kilo ohms or something, but they are connected there. All of them are grounded. This one is, like I said, 3.3 volt, we know what that does. What these do, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I almost forgot when I measured it. You have a game port. And those traces, most of them seems to Go on the back side around here, and they do hook up to the, here and identify the few of these. Uh, what they do on the like the analog side of the joystick or gamepad. So I'm guessing these are related. These uh, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, so I would wouldn't consider those like a part of the audio circuit. And uh, what we can do zoom out again and turn off uh, traces and take up the caps. So you can see how I marked up the caps with different colors, what, what they like, uh, what the values and sizes are. And uh, so you can basically de deduce that the caps with the same value and brand and all of that. So the green ones and the red ones is one, it is two types of brand that are identical otherwise. And anything related to uh, like uh, rails, or different types of caps. So that's why I would argue that these are rail related, some form or the other. Uh, that's why I wrote MISC over here, like I said before, we we'll get to that. But that's why I wrote MISC. Because uh, these MISC caps, as I call them, these five here, are the same models as, say, these or this one. So yeah, that's basically the breakdown of uh, the A64. Uh, yeah, so I'm, pro I'm gonna post these images on uh, our Discord server. It's the plan. Now there might be errors in here, so I don't take my word for this being correct because I'm corrected multiple errors myself uh, over the two days I drew this up. So it's not like is exactly how it's connected but it's a simplified version and you can use it to not spend two days trying to figure everything out and if you're good you probably can figure out faster than I did uh, but this could be a good start just if you want to measure around instead of trying to you know poke around until you find find where things go so you can use this to verify for capacitors I decided to go for Panasonic on the rails so 
These are uh, FR series capacitors, so they are marketed as low ESR. So I got some 50 volt, uh, 22, 22 microfarads ones. And then I got some 25 volt, 47 microfarads. And uh, last we have uh, some 20 volt, 25 volt, 100 microfarads. So that's for the rails. Then I have bought other caps uh, over time. I bought caps for this card uh, for quite some time, but I can never get uh, exactly what I want all, uh, all the time uh, due to stock issues. A lot of things are not in stock. But uh, I have some of these uh, Nishikon, and uh, these are well, gold colored, gold sleeve with black. And these are marketed as audio grade. Uh, uh, the original ones on the card is also Nishikon, at least the big ones, the 470 microfarad ones. They are uh, from the VR series, the original ones, so VR. You can still find them in Mouser and they are advertised as uh, like for basic entertainment equipment, so I suppose a sound card qualifies. These ones are the more premium audio grade. I'm saying audio grade because, uh, well, anything can be that and it doesn't mean it's necessarily good. But these are also an issue counts. And these are rated 85, 85C, which is more than enough because they shouldn't run hot really. And also got these niche counts here. So the other ones were 4.7 microfarads, uh, 50 volts. And these are also 4.7 microfarads, 50 volts. But uh, I suppose they're even more premium audio grade. Uh, they are rated 105C. So I think I'm going to go with these because uh, my A64 is never going to turn into a gold card, no matter how many gold caps it's on it. So I'm going to go with these because I like blue. And they're a little bit beefier, just, just to show off that blue, I suppose. So these are, uh, they sh should probably be better than the original ones. If they make any actual difference, who knows, I'm not an audiophile, so I wouldn't know. But I uh, can't imagine them being worse uh, since they're the higher tier that they cause for, for this type of application so that i decided for those i also wanted these for the 470 microfarads i have that technically but those are 6.3 volts the problem was that i couldn't find 16 volt rated ones at 8 millimeter diameter with three and a half millimeter pitch uh, they were out of stock and been out of stock for the past i don't know I ordered twice uh, from Mouser. It might be somewhere else on I can find them, but uh, kind of gave up trying to source some there with, uh, without having to bend the legs in weird places and stuff. And just look ugly. So uh, I looked around a little bit of people have put on an A64 and sound card in general before in those amplifier locations. So uh, I think I found someone using the. Panasonic FM series, but uh, see here, yeah, but they were out of stock also. So my third option was uh, Panasonic FC capacitors. So they're basically dark. Uh, you can recognize them. They're dark, uh, dark, very dark blue with like a almost gold slash green metallic stripe on them. Uh, so yeah, I figured this should be. Pretty good. Like the original Nishikans are some kind of generic budget model. These are quite a lot more expensive. Doesn't necessarily mean better, but uh, yeah, Panasonic seems to make good caps. So I bought these. I might replace them later with uh, some blue Nishikans just to color match, match the smaller ones. But uh, since I can't get my hands on them, it doesn't matter. So I also bought some new audio jacks. The uh, reason I decided to do that was because uh, some of the old ones felt kind of bad. So, take the card here. So when I was measuring, uh, for example, the line in. So, that feels pretty good, relatively smooth. Uh, that's the mic. But when I got to, to the line out, they are kind of stiff, uh, same as with the PC speaker, 
tend to have soften up a little bit now, but uh, yeah, they feel kind of probably worn. And this one really want to go to like the side for some reason, but like the lining is fairly easy. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but uh, yeah. Another reason was I wanted them gold plated, which I didn't find. But uh, like I said, as I uh, measured the card, I noticed that the speaker and line out is kind of stiff. And uh, yeah, so I bought some uh, new ones. I could actually have bought these in the same colors. The blue one was out of stock, but we don't need that. So the black and I kind of bought the black and the green one. What about a euro plus tax? Uh, I kind of just bought those and replaced those too, but uh, still wanted like an upgrade, so I bought uh, these. Uh, they're a little more expensive, but they are equivalent in how they're connected internally. So got a metal ring outside instead. Uh, these ones has like a small copper, uh, copper, almost like a wire going along it. Uh, out here and uh, this thing has more like a almost like an o-ring or it's like two clamps like a c clamp if i've used that like you can find the fans so these are quite stiff i think yeah but uh, they're quite solid and a little wobble uh, definitely more wobble than these so i'm thinking maybe i should upgrade these so i think these will look a little bit uh, more premium they are more expensive, but 50% uh, more. But uh, yeah, so maybe unnecessary, but uh, yeah, why not? The only downside is that you won't see the color coding, um, but you could fix that with the, on the your plate if you really wanted to. So what I have here is uh, nothing really complicated. My multimeter to the right here can measure the capacity of a capacitor. So you can basically hook it up to, to the com and uh, here and uh, measure the capacity so there's no ESR meter or anything like that you just measure the capacity so you can like if it says 1500 on it you can measure it see what it actually is and over here it's got a multimeter set to voltage so the idea is that you take a cap so i got a 1500 microfarad one and you can put it down here so minus to minus plus to plus so basically if i push this button it basically connects the cap to over here so it starts measuring the capacity it takes a little while for a big cap and this one here just discharges it uh, it's not needed to measure the capacity you can measure it twice or three times it puts a bit of charge in it to figure out uh, what the capacity is but on the other hand i really don't want to have them charged uh, any amount uh, when i'm going to use them later for recapping so i have a discharge here and i can see the voltage here and I also got a small resistor here, so when I push this, it measures the voltage and also sends the voltage to ground over a 220 ohm resistor. So let's uh, test this out. So I got the measuring button here, so I'm just going to hold it in. And uh, probably going to take 15 to 20 seconds for a big cap like this to get the readout. So the reason why we're going to do this, and I'm going to explain it once I show this. So I've got 1648 and now it's back to zero again and then we can just discharge it and it should show up here. Yep, it's not discharged. So we can take a smaller capacitor, it's a 10 microfarad one worth and put it here and do the same, measure it. Mm. Yeah, 10.61. Uh, we can discharge it. It's not gonna show much because it's so small. Uh, yeah. So the idea why we're doing this is uh, we want to try to bin the caps, uh, these ones, for audio. So these ones and uh, these ones for the audio. Uh, so we get for every stereo output to input. So line in, line out, speaker. We want a pair of two. Uh, that match our matching pair for the channels so 
We need, I think, uh, 13, 12 or 13 caps, something like that. And we need 13 caps, and three of them are mono, I think. So we need, yeah, we need some, uh, we need 10. Uh, we have, uh, let's see here, the card. I got eight here. Then we got, uh, I think, these two here. And these should be mono, so that eight plus two. And I'm probably gonna try to match those also against uh, where they're now going. And yeah, my brain needs to work. They're going to to the line out here, so it should be that one and that one, I think. But anyway, that's the idea. That we're gonna bin caps. So I'm gonna open this bag and uh, get some out. So yeah, I guess the reason why you want to to do this is because if you get two caps that are well, rated the same, so these are rated at 4.7 microfarads. But say, for example, uh, these 470. I don't know if they're plus minus 10 or 20. But say you have one on the low side and one on the high side. They're gonna have different frequency uh, span and uh, maybe even different volumes. I'm not sure. But they, they're probably gonna sound a bit different. So you, you want to match pairs to make the channel sound the same. I guess that's the thing from what I've read and I've been thinking about it before so I did re research it a little bit and uh, because I have this this feature on this UT61D multimeter from Unity I figured why not I got the breadboard so so now that I have my caps I could uh, I can uh, insert one here Sure, shouldn't be any voltage on that one, but uh, yeah. let's push the button and measure it. 4.98 should be 4.7. 4.99 can try it again the same without discharging. 499. So it seems to be like 499 that one. So I'm just gonna make a note. I'm gonna take some tape and uh, basically stick them, stick it to it, and uh, try to find a matching one. And, it, uh, and if uh, we have a few that don't match, we can use those for the mono. I figured. Four ninety four ninety. So four ninety on that one. I'm just gonna keep doing this for all of these. I get uh, get them all binned. So these are the 470 microfarad ones. Five. So let's call it 485. Let's see what we got. So uh, the big ones, I'll try three of them, and two of them work within one microfarad. So that should be. I don't think the other one is 490. I don't think anyone will hear any difference. But anyways, those were very close. So then we got the small ones. We got three of them at 497 microfarads, two at 496, three at 494, one at 493. 2 at 490 and 1 at 487 and 1 at 485. So, from what I can see, we need 10 of them to be in pairs of 2, so that means 5 pairs. So, we've got 4 here, the identical. 
and I think we could use those. Uh, let's see here on the schematic. I'm gonna look here. Let's see here so for the green yak. If, um, if we look at the schematic, we should uh, we have two over here, and uh, then uh, they go over to this ship here, and then they move over to two of these caps here. So I think we should use the pair of four here. For that, I've got two identical pairs there. Then uh, we've got three of them here. We can use two of those, and then we have two of those. Uh, let's see here. And then we got two here. So that's five pa pairs and one uh, extra. And we're gonna need three more, so we take one out of that pair, I think. And then we use these two for the mono, like Mike and stuff. And these are the femtifiers. So we got our caps sorted according to capacity in pairs. So yeah, I suppose we have to actually put them on the card now. So that would be the next thing to do to remove this IO shield here. And uh, then we can remove all the caps and all the jacks if I'm gonna do that. So I put the card in a holder here. Also put in this two and a half millimeter to RCA adapter here. Figure I could hold the, the connector when I try to pull it out. So I'm gonna try this with hot air because I got five legs and they're kind of crooked too by design, which could be annoying. But hopefully I can get them out easily enough. So let's try. <coughs> So next up is cap removal. So see if we can do that.
So that's the card clean of caps and uh, audio jacks. So next thing to do is to put some new caps and audio jacks on it. And I'm gonna start with the caps because then I won't melt this by accident with a soldering iron for whatever reason. However, I would get there. It's the wrong side, but why not take them last? Uh, it's time for caps. So I'm gonna start with some some. 100 microfarad caps, we have three of those. So next up would be the 47 microfarads. So I'm gonna start down here, closest to the game port. And yeah, this one is uh, negative five from what you can see. So that's why if you notice the ground is on either side, but they are turned the same orientation. And I have that on the original picture and my notes I showed before also says that uh, that, is, uh, that is negative five and the one next to it is plus five. That's why it is like that, so that should be correct. So now we need uh, five 22 microfarads. It said four on my image, but uh, we've got four here already, plus one down here. So apparently I made a typo, so I have to fix that later. The plan is to upload uh, those images on uh, my Discord server, or our Discord server, me and my friends. So if you want the, if you want the, the images, both the GIMP uh, file and uh, the, the rendered images and uh, probably gonna put the documents there and so on. I'm gonna make like a, I have a group, but I'm gonna make like a new channel in that group for uh, sound cards. I have for motherboards now. So you can find our Discord item in the description of the video or on my banner is a Discord icon. Uh, that way you can uh, get on there if you want to download like uh, cap lists for motherboards mostly. But, uh, yeah, as I uh, do other stuff, I'm gonna add that there too. I usually don't add graphics cards as much because uh, very few caps usually on graphics cards and quite simple, so. But might start doing that. Some cards are definitely more interesting to add. Thank <laughs> you. 
So. Uh, that should be all the caps for the rails. So it's all the grade caps now. Audio grade. Mm. Uh, audio, the audio caps. So let's plan this. So the pair down here is uh, for the audio out here, the, like the line out. Technically, also goes to the speaker for this ship here, and I go past these two. So I want to uh, had one set, I think, with four. So. That one, these ones. I figure if I use these ones, I can put uh, the two of them at the bottom here, and then I could put two of them there, and they're all the same. Just to make sure. Like I don't know how much it matters, but why not? Oh, that's the first audio grade cap. <laughs> so yeah, I suppose if you like used to either used to recapping audio gear or work with it something, maybe you can recommend some caps for different areas of audio equipment in the comments for people. Uh, like good options. Let's see how that could hurt. Yes, you're using the flux to pick up uh, soldering got stuck in the solder mask. It's actually quite a lot easier to do it that way. Hmm, it's crooked. Better fix that. So that's the first set on. So you can actually do the line, I think. Let's see. Yeah, line in. Because that's the, uh, let's see here, the pointing. So line in would be the next one here. 
I'm gonna do like that, that, that one, and there would be number three from the top, I think. Yeah, because those are separated for some reason. So these caps are a little bit bigger than old ones, taller and maybe a millimeter wider. So there's no, no real room to spare here. So now I have to do the correct one here. Mess it up now. Should be that one. So as you can see, there's two free on either side. And those are pairs. So while we're at the back here, you can see the traces to the caps here coming from over here. And then they continue down to the ship, continue down here. So it's quite easy to see. Makes sense. So it's only these three up here in the corner. For the mic and stuff, so we won't have any pairs there. So the last one of the Nishikons audio grade caps. It looks quite good. Just wish I had the two blue ones there that were the right value, but I don't. So the next thing to do is obviously get to put those in. Yes, that's it for the caps. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. So the port would be, uh, be next to all the jacks. So I'm gonna get four of those and uh, put them in place.
So, I guess that's that. So, all the axe installed. Looks nice. I have to clean it up. I clean the card before mount mounting it. And the uh, IO bracket back and testing it. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty well so far. Hopefully everything still works. I haven't tested this card in a long time, but uh, it's always been working, so I don't think it should be an issue. So yeah, time to clean it, mount it back together and test it. And we're gonna test some modern software for it. That actually allows this to do a little bit more than uh, usually, usually in DOS. So, the sound card is back together again. Put on the higher plate here after cleaning up the card. Uh, I think it came out pretty well. It's pretty nice looking, I think, with the new caps and uh, the new audio jacks. I think it looks better than I expected, actually. And they're very nice. So I think this makes the card look uh, quite a lot better. Not as cheap as the original. So uh, let's try it out now uh, with some. Uh, Gonna play an MP3 in Windows 98, and then we're gonna try some DOS games with the extra sound font RAM here. So we are in Windows here, and we have our Creative Sound Blaster AV64 installed. So let's try uh, an MP3 here. I got some uh, um, free music basically, Creative Commons license, so hopefully YouTube won't strike me. So yeah, I can't exactly play what I want, but uh, I like some metal, so I found this uh, Thunder Force uh, cover. It's a um, cover for a video game. So I'm gonna play about uh, 90 seconds, so if you find this boring you can fast forward about 90 seconds. So another thing I would like to try is to show a new program that someone wrote. I'm gonna post a link in the description for that program. But it's basically a DOS extender. So if you are, if you know like uh, DOS for GW uh, that a lot of programs have, they either have it integrated, I think, in the .exe file, or you need to add it. So basically, games that need memory extensions to have this more memory. We'll use that, and when it comes to games, for example, like anything like Doom and Newer, we'll use it. So DOS for uh, DOS for uh, GW. Uh, I don't think there is one of those files in here, but yeah, you know what I mean. If you ever uh, used DOS and you run into the problem where that file sometimes is missing and needs to be added manually. 
Uh, I think a lot of uh, games incorporate it into its uh, XV. We can actually find it here, uh, DOS for GW. <coughs> and I have this one over here, DOS 32 AVE instead. It's also a memory extender. You can even see that the file size is basically the same. And, and this is quite important, but we'll get to that later. So, uh, for example, if I want, want to run Doom to here, I can run setup first just to select music card. And you can obviously se select some Lost A32, but say you want to run general MIDI. So we run that. Same and launch. Game is playing. We're using general MIDI, uh, basically emulated on the card. And this works fine in Windows. So now, say we want to do this in DOS. Uh, now, see here. So, if we want to do this in DOS, we can enable general MIDI for our A64 or A32. Let's see here, we have a pre-packed A64 DOS, so just like a pre-modified AutoExec.bat config system, all the drivers, so we got like A64 here, with the drivers, with the sound bank. Uh, I'm not using this particular one right now, but this is a 2 megabyte because that's what I have on my card, the biggest I can load. So essentially this is all our drivers we need for uh, A64, uh, A32. They, are, they also work on some some of 16 so that needs them. So let's open this file config syst first. And just so things make sense here. Notepad. So in here I wrote a boot menu. So I got my lang language settings here because I got the Swedish keyboard. Uh, So let's see here, so I got our first boot option is Windows 98 SE, which we're running. And I got uh, DOS plus A64 and DOS A64 for plus general MIDI. And then I got, uh, uh, this is basically the boot menu for Windows, DOS, which is the A64. And this is A64 general MIDI. There's no commands here, you can put in just like I did over here. So you can technically have a boot menu with different languages, I suppose. With different keyboards, if whatever it is you want that. So let's open the, this auto exec here. I also think I modified uh, this one. I uh, think I did. I think you have to. Uh, okay. Yeah, logo is disabled, but you need to have boot UI zero. That basically, if that's one, which is default, Windows will boot. You just ignore the menu if I recall. Uh, yeah. So then we're gonna edit this one. So here we, where most things happen. So I got some more language stuff. This is auto exec top but uh, so here is Win. So this is Windows for Windows 98, the boot menu here. And it starts up Windows 98 by running win.com. So essentially what that does. Then we got the first DOS option for A64. So it sets a, sets a bunch of variables here. Uh, there's a mouse above, you can ignore that. It sets like, so it knows where uh, different things are. And also what IQs and so on for the sun card. It's supposed to be some games and stuff. And then we basically have the different part of the drivers to configure the card to set it up. So it actually works. And that's it basically it. But if you look at this here, this A util here. Got the same line down here, but a different ending. So you got EM colon GM. So that's basically emulation general MIDI. You can have Gravis, I think, and Roland. Uh, so yeah, so this would enable if we selected the bottom option in the boot menu, which you're gonna see later, would enable general MIDI. That sounds all fine, but th there is a problem with that. It, it, it does work, but only partially. This is a problem with all A32s and 64s as far as I know. 
So let's restart into DOS and try to run Doom there again. So here's our, our boot menus, option 1, Windows 98, we don't want that. And then we've got DOS plus A64, so that's the more traditional way of using it. Then we've got A64 here with General MIDI, so it's going to use that. So yeah, it sets all the environmental variables and it's configuring a card here. And I can say if you util TSR, it's actually uploading the uh, it was, up, was uploading the uh, uh, sound font into the 2 megabyte of RAM. So the more RAM I have, the longer it should take. I don't have a card with more than two, but yeah. So now that 2 megabyte of memory has a uh, custom sound font in it. So the card's gonna sound different depending on what you put in there. What the instruments and so on, how they sound. We can go to games, which is still in Swedish, and then Doom 2. So now if we launch Doom 2 here, it's gonna hang. It's set to, just like before the same games, it's set to general MIDI. So now we're gonna launch it. And it's gonna hang here very soon, probably at the Doom logo. So now we have to reset here. Loading the sound font. So now let's go to games and do two again. Instead of just running Doom straight up, we're gonna change the uh, memory extender to DOS 32A, and then type Doom 2. And now Doom is running and playing. Select new game. So we're actually running general MIDI here right now. And this should work for most games. So we can do the same thing with Duke Nukem 3D. I have put the DOS uh, 32A in that folder too. I'm just gonna make sure that <laughs> make sure I have the card set to general MIDI. Sound shows. I was set to A32. Problem is with A32 if you run that, it, most things won't use the sound font. It will use the sound font in the EEPROM instead. And uh, our uh, software that supports that. Uh, DOS MIDI, uh, DOS MID, so MIDI player, it can uh, support that. So you don't need like uh, a different extender. I think there are a few games, a couple of games that can actually use the sound bank properly, the 32 so. So let's go here, where is my, ah, FX card, we need the music card. So we need uh, general MIDI. And we don't want to launch from there, we're just gonna hang because I can't uh, run the A32 on a .com file. Uh, to A32 Duke 3D. And now Duke Nukem is gonna run with uh, General MIDI. And I have probably turned off the sound effects on this game just to listen to the music when I was testing. This is my lab hard drive, so it's often used in weird ways. It makes no sense with playing, but that's not the point. You can load up a map here. I 
think this working is fine. And if I were to just start to move again without uh, DOS32A, it would hang too. So, if anyone is using an A32, A64, and want to use general media in more games, like the majority of them, this is one way of doing it. So, this is my A64, sometimes known as an A64 value. So, uh, upgraded it in a previous video to 2 megabytes uh, sound font memory instead of half a megabyte. And so, I can load a high quality font and then use DOS32 Abe to get uh, wider general MIDI support in uh, games. And I put some new caps on it, obviously, some new Nishikon and uh, uh, Panasonic and some new audio jacks. And uh, yeah, I think it's a fairly cheap solution if you can swap the chip if you want uh, more sound font memory and using DOS32 A. Recapping doesn't have to be too expensive either if you want to do that. So yeah, I kind of kind of hated the A64 in the beginning, but uh, this card actually sounds pretty good now, to the point where I actually kind of like it. So yeah, so I'm probably gonna put this in a 486, I think, which is a little bit too old, but people keep doing it, and yeah, I figure with the uh, with added capabilities, why not? It would be kind of cool. And this uh, looks a little bit cooler now, too. So, if you like this content, uh, the breakdown of the A64, you can leave a comment if it was useful to you, just interesting. And if you find it boring and a waste of your time, you can leave a comment too. So, thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members' private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels, where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.